it's much better. People ask me more about this specific fish than my bikers. My fish friends ask me about this fish. My friend friends ask me about this fish. Family asked me about this fish. And I even asked myself what this fish was when I first saw it. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about my climbing perch, AKA my novice. If this is your first time here, my name is Brian and I make all kinds of freshwater fish keeping videos. In this channel, I cover things like DIY projects related to the aquarium hobby, along with giving you guys updates on all of my fish. So if you like what you're checking out, stay tuned and hit that subscribe button and I appreciate your support. So the reason why I want to cover this fish is because so many people ask me about this fish and I don't even notice it or I don't even recognize it. I don't recognize how unique this fish is or how this fish doesn't really play its part in the aquarium hobby. No one really likes to keep this fish. Literally, when I went to go ask my local fish store about the rarity of this fish or how often they get this fish, they can get them. It's just that no one wants to buy them. Like no one asks about this fish. The only times you'll ever see this type of fish on YouTube is when they're in like Asian style tanks or they're being cooked or they're being farmed or they're being fed to something else. So the scientific name for this fish is the Anabas tea, but the common name for this fish is a climbing perch or the climbing gourami. It's a fish that's typically farmed for food in several countries like Asia, New Guinea and whatnot. Uh, its natural habitat includes areas like swamps, marshes, lakes, canals, pools, small pits and stuff, uh, rice paddies and whatnot. Pretty much non high flow type areas. The cool thing about this fish and what actually gives this fish its name is that they can actually walk on land. Not really walk, but kind of like waddle around and whatnot. And also if needed, this fish can survive out of water for a significant amount of time. So it's kind of like how the lungfish can't stay out of water for a long time, but it's not as extensive as the lungfish, but you get the point. This fish has a crazy way of pushing out all of its spines along its gill plates and upper back, which prevents predators from swallowing them whole and ultimately spits them back out whenever a predator tries to eat them. So in the wild, this fish can get up to 12 inches, but in captivity, especially captive red anabas, they only get to about five inches or so. So if you keep one that gets up to like eight or whatnot, you're pretty lucky and you pretty much have a wild caught. Also, its size is pretty appealing for like at home aquariums and whatnot, because some people might have a 40B, they might wanna have a solo fish or a group of fish they can keep anabas in there and it'll be pretty cool they can be quite nippy and territorial but honestly i've kept this fish with a lot of predatory fish like bikers barracudas pyara needle gars and whatnot just choose a fish that can defend himself i can see this fish chasing down neon tetras maybe beating up some angels and whatnot so make sure you know which fish you're putting this fish with so according to seriouslyfish.com the temperature for this fish is between 15 celsius and 30 degrees celsius but i keep mine around like 27 degrees celsius and if you don't know what that is it's around like 80 to 81 degrees fahrenheit so the reason why i keep this fish at 80 degrees fahrenheit is because all my tanks around the house are the same temperature just in case i need to move one fish from one tank to another so ph for this fish is around 5.5 to 8 gh hardness is around 36 to 447 ppm my main concern when it comes to ph and hardness and whatnot is just keeping it stable i don't really care about like testing ph or testing hardness and whatnot unless my water is really messed up but just as long as i keep it stable it's fine for me i haven't ran a ph test in my tanks for a long long time and the last time i really cared about ph was when i had crystal reds but that's something else different ph harness just make sure it's stable and you should be good as for the diet that i keep this fish on its staple pellet is the cichlid gold i feed it hikari massivores from time to time and i also give it a weekly feeding of frozen tilapia and market shrimp pretty much anything that my bikers eat my novice will eat as well so personality wise this fish is very very skittish so if i can gauge for you how skittish my novice is from 1 to 10 10 being super super skittish i would say it's around 9 or 8. this is how skittish it is all the footage that you've been watching of my novice is actually from my gimbal that i'm controlling with my phone i'm in the darkness all the way back in the garage and my gimbal is in front of the tank if i was recording in front of the tank with my hand and my camera and whatnot my novice won't be acting like this the only reason why my novice is coming out to eat and whatnot is because it doesn't recognize the gimbal as someone and it's not scared of my camera it's scared of me so if you're the type of person that likes to watch your fish swim and whatnot and you like to be in front of the tank and you're expecting this fish to be out and about just know that this fish is very skittish and it might hide from you mine literally hides from me underneath my bikers like my bikers are all poly pile and it will hide underneath the bikers to get away from me now i know what you might say go ahead and put some plants in there put some decorations in there and whatnot 
no. Uh, whenever I put decorations in my tank, especially with these bikers right here, they'll start to claim territories. Like, let's say, for example, I put a piece of driftwood on the right and some plants in there, and then a driftwood on the left and some plants in there. My two enemies will claim those areas, and any biker that's get that gets close to that area or that area, uh, they'll just attack him and fight and whatnot. As of right now, the way the tank is, no decorations, just substrate, no territories are being claimed. All the bikers are in harmony. They haven't fought for a hell of a long time to the point where their fins are all healed up now, their dominance is built up. If I put decorations in there, I think all hell will break loose. So the reason why I got this fish in the first place is because of how unique this fish looks. Uh, when it flexes its skills, it has like spines coming out of the bottom. Funny thing about this fish is when I first netted this fish, it fell onto the ground. Um, my girlfriend and I were freaking out, trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And all you see is this fish crawling from one end to the other. It was just crawling on the ground. Uh, I didn't know what to do. Uh, went ahead and picked him up and I got stabbed by the back. I just saw its spines like come out of its gills. His back was like flared up and whatnot. And when I tried to get it out of the net, you can see it's like the spines were getting stuck onto the net and whatnot. It, it, it looked crazy. Once I saw that the fish was getting stuck in the net, once I saw all of its spines, pretty much seeing its potential, I knew this fish was unique. So that's it for today's video. I just wanted to spend some time covering some appealing points of my novice, that little random fish that I keep with all my polys. Some people asked about it in the comments, my friends asked about it, and I even asked about it. So there's gotta be someone out there looking for information on this little random fish. So I hope to provide it in this one right here. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one and peace guys.